Maybe I want to add myself to the stream. What's up, y'all? Happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day. The day where we spread love, we spread tolerance, we spread all the good stuff. Uh, shout out to the live chat. Um, Dasha, hope you're feeling better. Better days. Hey, girl. Hey, Vanessa. Dream big. Hey, Olivia. Um, let's see all the housekeeping and jump right into it because there's a lot to jump into. Hey, geek girl, uh, support the show, bottom of the screen. Uh, you can see where you can support the show as well as we are streaming uh, specifically on YouTube and Patreon nowadays. So super chats, super stickers are available. All of your support is highly, highly appreciated and allows these shows to go on. That all being said, um, what do I want to start with? Uh, as I'm going to address this because, you know, it is Martin Luther King Day, and I think that it's important to talk about tolerance and uh, racial equality um, and the importance of accepting diversity and people for who they are. Um, as many of you probably know, there's been a lot of talk about Alina, um, and some of the things that ha she has said that has been very, very questionable and, you know, outright racist online. Uh, I talked about it on our Instagram at 90 Day the Melanated Way. And I'm not trying to villainize anyone. Um, I just think it's important to call out in this day and age, 2022, um, that, you know, there's still a battle. There's still a hill to climb for equality for everyone. And I think that it's important to raise those questions and to talk about the issue and to educate all of us uh, so that we can do better. Because when you know better, you do better. And if you learn something and you teach someone, then, you know, that's the best that we can do, right? We can't, we can't keep our mouths closed any longer. That all being said, this is quite the episode, season five, episode six, Burns and Betrayals. They start off the episode with uh, Caleb and Alina. Apparently they had a lot of fun the night before. Um, and Caleb's a bit impressed with her because he feels like she can do a lot of stuff for her size. Um, but they had some awkward moments, right? So I guess they had sex and um, they had to figure out positions and all the things and all the things and all the things. So they both said it was great, but they still had like to get to know each other, which, you know, that's fair, right? I, I would think that after 13 years, that would be a lot of anticipation and, and whatnot. <clears throat> I don't know though, you guys, I don't know if I'm buying that there's chemistry between those two. I really, I'm just not seeing it. Cause you know what I mean? Like when you, when you're into someone, you can like you can vibe. You know how sometimes you are so into someone that everyone around you, everyone in the room doesn't even seem like they're there. I don't get that vibe from them, but I could be wrong, right? <clears throat> I could be wrong. So um Caleb talks about how it was a different experience for him because um she's a little person, and so he was talking about positions and autonomy and her her body and all the things, and they both were very nervous for for the first time, but he also feels that it brought them closer. Now, the question I have to you guys is, did you feel the chemistry on the screen? You know how you watch a movie and you can tell that the two leads hate each other because there's no chemistry? Um, what did you guys think? Did you think that there was chemistry between the two? Weigh in in the live chat. If you're watching the replay later, let me know in the in the replay. I'm super curious if you, if you guys are, are seeing a vibe that I'm not seeing. So after a little bit of like pillow talk, they decide they're gonna get up and go sightseeing and they're gonna meet up with Elijah um, and they're going to the Grand Bazaar. And Alina really wanted to have it be the three of them so that they can all bond because 
apparently Elijah's leaving in a couple of days, which I think is a terrible idea. Just on the production end, Elijah brings the the oomph, the little spice. He's the comic relief. Like we need him. So I'm surprised that I thought he was there to quote unquote protect her. So why is he leaving so early? I feel like they that was a bad move on the production and like no you you all so it's not dry you need him because he comes with the one liners with the quickness and he brings a little bit of drama that we need in my opinion but he's leaving in a couple of days so they're going to all hook up she's hoping they have a great day she's hoping that Caleb and Elijah can get together um, so they get in the ride share and, uh, you know, Elijah's like, you know, how do you sleep? And of course, Alina's like, not that much. Wink, 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 wink. Oh, that's the other thing I can't do. I can't wink properly. So don't come for me. Um, <clears throat> so they get to the, uh, Grand Bazaar. They're tasting coffees and teas and Turkish delights. They're walking around all the things, and then they're going to go sit down and, and try some of the tea. But meanwhile, Caleb wants to explore, but he wants to explore by himself. So he's like, um, I want to go down there. Y'all aren't invited, and I'll see you guys in a bit, but could you grab me a tea? It really felt like a... a <laughs> it felt like a dine and dash. Like... Oh, I forgot my wallet. Oh, can you can you quickly just grab me that? I'm going to be right back. Like, it felt like one of those to me. I thought it was hilarious. And then so he was gone. But what it did do is opened up an opportunity for Elijah and Alina to have some alone time. And so he's like, girl, spill the tea. And she's like, yeah, we kissed. And it was spicy, like Tabasco level spicy. And he's looking at her like, oh, well, that's good. But did you only just kiss? Um, or did you go deeper, he says. And Alina's response to that was that she took a ride on his disco, disco stick. Um, and, you know, she's more attached to him now. And now she wants to have the conversation. Like, where are we going? And women and men, because there are men that do this too. I personally think, and it's my personal opinion, that when you just meet someone, because honestly, we're not even three weeks into this quote unquote relationship, you just had sex. No one wants to have the conversation like, where are we going? What does this mean? Are we together? Like, no one wants to have that conversation yet at all. Like, it's too soon. It's too soon. So, yeah, you take your clothes off. You decided to take your clothes off before you were clear on what type of relationship this was. And now you want to have the relationship talk? Like, mm, maybe you should have thought of that before. I don't know. So she just really feels like she is going to become more attached to him. <clears throat> but, you know, she feels like he's being vague and she feels like they don't, she doesn't know what the future looks like. And she wants to have a conversation with him. But she has a secret. And her secret is that she used to live with her ex-boyfriend and she never told him. And I I kind of don't understand why that's a secret. And I actually don't even understand why that's a big deal. So what? You, you used to live with your boyfriend. And what's the secret part in that? Is it that you lived with your boyfriend while you were talking to Caleb and having feelings for him? Is that what the secret is? Because if you guys were just friends and online friends at that and had never met, then I don't understand what's the secret. Like I'm confused by that. Um, so she is like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to tell him. And I feel like it's going to change a relationship. And what if he's mad that I lied to him and how will he react? What did you lie about again? That you, didn't tell him that you had a living boyfriend. That's the lie. Or is there more to it? I need some explanation because it's not making sense to me. But Caleb, because, excuse me, not Caleb, Elijah, because Elijah brings the drama. He's like, girl, you better get your shit together and just tell him. And I agree with that. Use your words. Communication, like I say, is one of the things that I feel like is important. Um, 
for a relationship. So use your words. It's clear, Alina, that you know how to use your words, despite the fact that you say you're you're Russian and you don't speak English well. Because what I'm seeing on TV, it's clear to me that you speak excellent English and you know exactly what you're saying. So go ahead and use those same great words that you've been using since woo, two, four, 2014 and work that shit out. On to Kim and Usman. So I gotta tell you, Kim stole the show for me this episode. Okay, she stole the show for me this episode. And <clears throat> so she's in her room. It's clear that Soldier Boy really had no intention of, of making her a potential quite yet. But what I think is interesting is that she packed her bags, you guys, and all of her shirts have something about Usman. Hashtag Usman. Hashtag Sh Soldier Boy. USB Entertainment. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Soldier okay. Okay. I understand. And I get it. I signed up for the season and I get this season that's all about his music video. I get it. I get it. It's like um, it's like a 12 hour commercial to promote Zara, his music video. I get it. Okay. Um, so she's looking in her closet and she has, you know, a cornucopia of different Lisman t-shirts. She decides what she's going to wear. It's video shoot day. Um, and so she's getting ready. And here's the thing. Any of my, any production people out there, anyone who has ever worked on a set, ever worked uh, behind the camera, behind the scenes, can you please just be real? Because what I, they were so unorganized. Yes, shoots run late all the time. All the time, absolutely. But I don't know any production that you're like, oh, just deciding in the moment what you're going to wear. You're just deciding before you're filming. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, they do your hair and makeup, but those call times are early as fuck. Before the call time that you get is not the call time. And then, ooh, an hour later, you're, you're on set and you're filming go. That's how it works. You're like three, four hours call time, you sit around for an hour, you go to craft services for a little bit and you sit around a little bit more and it's like a bunch of hurry up and wait. What it's not is, oh my God, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. It's not that. So I thought it was very weird. So anyways, they're running late and Bambus and Slam T, um, you know, are his team and they have nothing prepared. They're not ready. I mean, you guys obviously plan this trip. You plan where you're staying. You got the the video vixen model, all the things. Yet you don't have the essentials: hair and makeup, uh, wardrobe, uh, lighting, electricity, backups. Like you don't have any of that in place. But but you had the foresight to plan a whole music video that you've been shoving down our throats for for months, and yet the day comes and y'all not ready. It's very bizarre. It's just very bizarre to me. Um, Dasher said, I've worked as a production assistant on music video. So then, you know, you know that that is not how it works. There's, we're not, you're not running around with your head cut off like a chicken on the day of, like you are, but in a different way, not in an unprepared way. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to say. So, Anyways, um, song is about Zara. And as we know, we've met her briefly just through like um, pictures. He used to date an American girl named Zara and she broke up with him allegedly because he said that she couldn't handle his female fans. So she broke up with him. Okay, you guys, can we have a, can we talk real? Can we be real? Cause we're family now. You guys know me. I know y'all. Can we be real? What, who are these fans? Who are, and I know they're there. I'm just asking you. I know they're there because anyone who's in the public eye has some type of fan. I, I, I'm not taking that from him. What I'm asking is that he's saying that he has so many fans that his old relationship with Zara didn't work out because she couldn't handle how many female fans. Now, when I think of that, I think of like, 
I think of like a Kanye or a Justin Bieber or like a super A-list musician. I don't think, oh, Usman, who tells us that he's an international superstar, which I've already talked about in length. I just don't see it. But maybe he has so many women, he doesn't know what to do. And it broke up his long distance relationship with this Zara that he wrote a song about that he apparently loves so much. So he wrote the song about Zara, but then he told Kimberly a lie, which is a super red flag, right? Like if she's just your fan and you invited her to, to um, Tanzania to watch your music video, then why are you lying to her? But whatever. He tells her that Zara is just a song for all the Zaras out there in the world, which sounds ridiculous to me. Um, so we see Haskana, who's the director. Uh, Usman is getting trying to get his hair cut, but there's no power. So the cut is not even. And automatically, with a heartbeat, mom, yeah, mom manager, Kimberly, steps into play. She's like, oh, no. Oh, no, this is not even. How can they do you like this? And she's taking charge. And don't forget, Kimberly's older, right? She's like, what, 51, 52? And she's a mom. You know moms multitask. They don't fuck around. Like, you're not wasting my time. You're not wasting my money. And you're not wasting my energy. So they're like, no. So she was like mom manager times 100. So she starts taking charge. She's talking about, don't you guys plan better? I'm embarrassed for Usman. You got the, and then the other thing, because it, it distracts me. And it distracts me a lot because... I showed you guys, or if you follow me, you know that Usman said that he, in the last two years, made 52 million and, you know, talk about the numbers, whatever, but a lot of money, but you're still rolling with these fake ass Louis Vuitton bags. And it, it's driving me crazy. However, they're pulling out clothes from these Louis Vuitton fake bags and they're, they don't know what he's supposed to be wearing. How do you not know what's first on deck for your first shoot? How's that possible? How? Wardrobe had that. First of all, wardrobe gets there before everyone else. And they hang that shit up and they press it out. It's labeled. Everyone's like, I just, I just, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. So she takes charge. She's embarrassed for Usman. She's embarrassed for them. And she's like, you know what? These guys better not, you know, piss me off because boss lady Kim will step in and sh I'm not, her words, I'm not putting up with any of this BS. So she's not impressed with the lack of competency with this team. I wasn't impressed either because I didn't think that was realistic. I thought, you guys, it was a perfect opportunity for us, the viewers, to A, see behind the scenes of a real production, B, see where, where you, how you like location scout and decide that this is where where you're going to film something like they had so many opportunities in my opinion to not only show how a show or video gets created but also to show us this beautiful country that you chose for a reason because you keep saying you chose it because it's so romantic well show us the viewers what you see so that those that don't get to travel as much can see that and have that experience that's all i'm saying um so <sighs> They start filming the music video and uh, Usman clearly does not take direction well. When the director was like, okay, turn your head, turn your head, turn your head. And Usman's just sitting there like, doo, doo, doo. all I need to do is look cool, put my sunglasses on, look cool. Um, and even Kim, mom manager was like, yo, I'm gonna need you to lift up your energy, get your energy up because it's true when you're filming, you, you're on 10, right? Because all of those have to translate on screen. If you're just like, oh, 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 even there, I'm being extra. You have to be a little extra so that it, it translates. So he's doing all that. And then, you know, the song's coming out and uh, Kimberly did post it to her social media. I'm going to repost it probably later today. But, um, Do we want to talk about the auto tune or should I just leave that alone?
Usman superstar, international superstar. Should we talk about that? Oh, you know what? Hold on. I have to hold on. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Does this make me an international superstar? Because it has automatic auto tune. <laughs> I'm just saying that we can all make a song. Thanks for using. Okay. So we don't want to talk about autotune? Anyways, uh, they take five. And uh, Kimberly and Isman, they're sitting on the side, they're holding hands, and she's really just trying to pump him up and tell him that he really needs to get his energy up. <clears throat> but he's all pissed off. He's pissed off at his production team and all of this stuff. And she's like, okay, but you have to put that all aside. You know, you're a professional and, you know, you're an international superstar. So, like, be that. And so he does. He's like, um... I want a soda. Can you get me that? He said. And then I thought, oh, so listen here. You can't be on J-Lo demand levels where you want your M&M separated by color, international superstar Usman, because again, let's talk about your album. Do you have an album? I'll wait. You're not going to go and demand this woman that you're not paying, which she says, are you going to pay me? Because, and you know, she wants to be paid, paid, like paid, paid back in her room later. <sighs> Anyways, they are filming, filming. It's five hours later. They wrap for the night. Kimberly, and this is the only thing that I was just like, I know that I know her being a longtime crazy fan cannot possibly be comparing Usman, a.k.a. Soldier Boy, to Michael Jackson? You're comparing Usman to Michael Jackson? Listen, you guys, in the world, in the world, in 2022, in the world, there are literally still less than 10 mega superstars. And when I say mega superstars, meaning anywhere you go in the world, even if you go to a small village in Timbuktu, they know who that celebrity is. There are less than 10 of those. So I know you're not comparing Michael Jackson, who's one of those 10, to Usman, aka Soldier Boy. I, I mean... I know you're not, but we also know that you're a super fan of his music and, you know, you love him and you want to, you know, you're supportive. And I love that about her. I love that she supports her, her potential man. I love that she's a good friend to him. And I love that she bigs him up. Like, I love all of that. But like, let's be real. Michael Jackson, he is not. They get in the ride chair and, you know, I thought it was interesting that he you know, laid his head down on her and was like unwinding from a long day of filming. She apologizes to the team for going off on them, but then she also blames them for their lack of professionalism and their lack of preparation. And then the team starts freaking out at her and saying it was her fault. Um, and then so Isman jumps in and actually comes to her defense and says, you know, if it wasn't for her, this wouldn't have gone down the way it went down. Um, and they, he just feels like, 
they thought that they were on vacation and they're not there to va- be on vacation. They were there to work. And Kimberly seemed like the only one that was was working. And what was good is that that made him like her more. That made her him like her more. So now he's happy with her and we'll see what happens. Next, Memphis and Hamza. Memphis and Hamza. Oh, Lord. Okay, so they finally have some alone time after a few days um, together. And things have been rocky with the mom, obviously, because of that whole bedroom thing and the whole thing. So they're out at, like, a restaurant. And then it was, like, super awkward for me, at least. She's like, oh, I have to poop. Can we go poop? That's what we're opening the scene with. And she's like, yeah, uh, this, it's not, my stomach's not feeling good. And I don't know the, whatever she said, it's just not agreeing with me. Um, so she goes to the bathroom and in the bathroom, she's making all these crazy sounds. He's standing like right there. And then he sits down right there and he keeps saying, baby, 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 which is so distracting. Um, and she's like, I don't know. It was weird, guys. It was just a weird scene to me. It was unnecessary. Um, and so she's having some problems. Her body's not reacting the best to Tanzania. And so they have that whole bathroom scene. And then, boom, she comes out and she feels better. And they sit down and Hansa wants to know about her past because they're realizing, and it's what I tell you guys all the time. I don't care how long you feel like you've been in an online relationship. You don't know that person until you've spent time with them in real life. And two weeks or three weeks, probably is not enough time in my opinion, but whatever. They're now realizing that they don't know each other. They don't know anything about each other. He doesn't know anything about her past and she doesn't know anything about his past. And so he wants to know about her past. And she's like, well, what do you mean my past? And, you know, your life growing up as a kid, all of that stuff. And as we know, as viewers, that's a very sensitive topic for her um, because she's gone through a lot in her, her, her young life, relatively young life. And so she does mention how her mom used to not be a good mom because her mom used to be on drugs. Uh, she does mention that her dad was jailed for selling drugs and, It wasn't until she was like 30 years old that he got out of jail. Um, But she doesn't mention like the foster care, uh, growing up like really rough, all of that stuff. She doesn't mention that. She just mentions those two things, which I think is not enough for the person that you're supposed to be marrying in a couple of weeks. Like, how does that work? So he has those questions and he's having doubts because his mom's having doubts because the mom says, you don't really know her, which is absolutely true. But guess what? Memphis doesn't really know him either. So she's worried because now she's feeling vulnerable. She feels like she's opened up to him a little bit. And I would say, wouldn't you want to be able to be your most vulnerable with the person that you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with? Like you chose this person and you said this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. You want to be able to be 100% vulnerable with that person and trust that they're going to hold on and be your support system. So I find this whole thing a little odd because she's now feeling uncomfortable because she's feeling vulnerable and it's bringing up her abandonment issues and all of that. But these are the conversations you have to have because what if even you're vulnerable and that person miss uses or misappropriates or is terrible with your feelings. Shouldn't you know that now before you commit your whole entire life? I don't know. Actually, I do know. You should. You should do all of that before you walk down the aisle, period. Because maybe that person's not the person you're supposed to marry. I... So... <clears throat> Um, we also find out that Hamza has been lying to her for this last year that they've been talking. He originally told her that he was 28, but he's only really 26. And she only found that out because the sister who's 23, let it slip. 
Now I have a take on this whole situation now, you guys. My take is this. I think that the mom and the sister are in on, you know how Mama Karen says harvesting the American dollar? I think that that's what this situation is. Like, yeah, we're cool with you going and getting a foreigner and marrying the foreigner as long as you can go and get work and send that money back and support this family. And maybe after we can come over, you can sponsor us to wherever you are. Like that's the vibe that this whole family is giving because the mom, she was like, oh, he lied. Oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I don't understand why Memphis is overreacting. She's overreacting. It's not a big deal. Um, your son is a liar. It's a big deal. Did you want to raise a liar? So Memphis is having a, a little bit of an issue because she was comfortable with being six years older um, and not comfortable with being eight years older. And it's not so much just the age difference, but the fact that he lied and he lied for so long, right? She flew across the world to be with him and he had still not told her the truth. And so that's what's bothering her because she feels betrayed because really who wants to be lied to? And then it starts making you doubt. So now she's doubting, like, what else is he lying about? Um, and his explanation of lying is because he wanted her to accept him. She, he wanted to come off as mature. And he wanted to make sure that, you know, she gave him a chance and not thought that he was too young, which is fair, right? Because, you know, so some people don't want to date people that are too much younger than them or too much older than them, whatever. I personally don't think it's a big deal. I think that it's who you connect with within reason. I'll say that within reason. Um, but really it's who you connect with. Age is just your age. Um, and so she is pissed. She walks away, slams the door. She starts crying and she just doesn't really feel like she knows him. She's tired of being betrayed, hurt, and taken advantage of because she's had way too much of that in her past. Um, and so she's super mad and she takes a moment out. And the producer's like, hey, do you want us to, do you want to go out there? She's like, no, I don't want to go out there like this in front of the mom. So she calls Hamza in, says <clears throat> that... Um, he's sorry. And she asked, why did you lie? And he's like, I wanted you to accept me and I wanted you to feel close to me. And I wanted you to give me a, a chance. And that's why I lied. And then she's like, well, what else are you lying about? Do you, did you even go to college? And then she's like, call your sister in. No, call her sister in now. And so the sister comes and she wants to know if he really had this degree in heating, cooling, and energy. The sister that wasn't really sure about the translation. Um, and, you know, Memphis wanted to see the receipts. She wanted him to pull out his degree and show it to her, which he does. And it looks like he has like a two-year diploma. Um, I don't know in what, because it was in Arabic. And so I guess he's not lying about, about that. I thought it was interesting because you know who else is in heating and cooling is um, Ziad. So, you know, some of these trades are really good trades to get into and they're skill, skills that you can take really anywhere. And so I just thought that was interesting. I thought it was interesting. Um, I want to say this again, when you meet someone online, you don't know them until you actually spend time with them. And so it's interesting to me because Memphis, you know, she's highly educated, masters in nursing, the whole nine yards. And for her to say that she thought she knew more about him than she does is kind of interesting to me because like, I feel like she should know better. She should know better. But I guess dating is just so crazy that, you know, we just never, we never know. Up next, Jasmine and Gino bringing in the heat. Crystal says, I understand Memphis wanting to see stuff. Why don't they use a translator app? Yeah, I'm not sure because 
the one thing that I don't like that many of the people do on the show is when they are talking to a foreigner, they slow their talking down and or they say, I want to outside, outside. I want outside. Why are you a missing words and why are you talking so slow? Talking slow is not going to help them learn. And it's, I don't know. I think it's weird. I think it's weird. Oh, thank you, Dream Big. Appreciate the super sticker. Thank you for supporting the show. Um, so Jasmine and Gina are fighting. And as if you guys have no, noticed, they've been just fighting their whole trip. Like this whole trip. Yeah. Me outside. <laughs> they've been fighting the whole trip and he hasn't even been there. Me exercise. Me fat. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Um, all right. Jasmine and Gino fighting, been fighting for a few days now, just been fighting. And uh, she's going to the gym. And this whole scene was so interesting to me, to you guys, because I was like, so, okay, let me, I'm jumping ahead. But has Gino never been to a gym before? I find it crazy. I find it crazy. So they go to the gym. He's there just to support her morally. And she's like, sit there, being super bossy. She's working out, um, but she's mad at him because, again, he didn't get her a Christmas gift. He feels he got her a Christmas gift when he gave her the electric toothbrush, but she feels like that that ain't it. Um, and so he's trying to engage with her, and he's like, hey, is that considered a set, what you're doing? Like, what, what are you doing? What is that called? And I was like, how old are you? Aren't you 52? Have you never been into a gym before? How do you not know what's going on here? Um, and she gives him like the death stare and basically says, don't talk to me. And he's like, okay. And then she's like, good boy. And I was like, hmm. So there's like a power thing going on here. And I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's necessarily like, are you trying to emasculate him? Or are you trying to like, just have your own way all the time. It's very, it's very interesting. So she, she does, you know, try to boss him like he's not a grown ass man, but whatever, if it works for them, Hey, so she's pissed. So what she's decided that she's going to do, and I don't know when she had the time, she must've been so pissed yesterday, the day Christmas day that she was online researching because apparently she booked a four day trip on an Island um, off of Panama. And that's the gift that he's going to have to give her. Oh, and he has to pay for it. And it's $2,500. And when she said that, you guys, he took his glasses off and he just looked at her, but he looked scared y'all. Like I'm, I don't really have the money to do this, but somehow I'm going to have to do this. Cause I'm going to have to make her happy. He literally looked scared and it was hilarious to me. So she picked her gift and she wants to make sure that um, it's more expensive than any other trip that he's taken any other woman on and because she feels she's worth it. Gino has questions at first and then he says, okay, I'll do it. And she said, obedient. That's how I like it. Obedient. He is not, wait, what? He is not your child. He's a grown ass man. Jasmine, he's not your child. And I agree. Dash is like, does she not understand that he's not working right now? That's exactly it. He has said over and over again that he's been off of work for the past seven months. He's budgeting. It's a hard time, y'all. It's a global pandemic. People have been laid off left, right, and center and are not getting the same type of jobs. Plus, like he said, he's the one that travel and travel's not cheap. He had to pay for his flight. He's paying for the room. He's paying for meals. He's paying for entertainment. And now she wants to add an additional twenty five hundred. Um. Okay. And why again are we not staying at your house? 
so we can cut at least the hotel cost out. And like, why are you not, you know, maybe contributing some of the meals? Maybe we can have a home cooked meal. You can show me, you know, some Panamanian food, home cooked. Like, why are you not like, okay, two way street, no? I don't know. It's possible. So anyways, he's going to do it. Um, and, you know, he's just really worried because he doesn't have that money, but he's going to do it. And then all of a sudden, you guys, they're starting to have this. Cr I don't even know where the fight came from. I feel like I went to take a sip of my water and I looked and they were fighting. But apparently she wants him to set on fire all the stupid things he has in his house. And then she'll be 100 percent happy. She wants it all out. And then she started freaking out about the red and blue colors in the house. And if I come to America and I'm looking at the red and blue cheap colors that don't go together, who picked those colors? And then when he's like, well, we both picked them. She freaks out. She freaks out. She's like, I want to pick the colors because um, I, have okay. And I'm just going to say what she said. Don't come for me and don't try to flag me. Or maybe I'll just, I'll say it like this. She said, I want to pick the colors. I want to be sipping my coffee and I want to pick the colors in my house because I've sucked more D in the past two days than your ex has ever done in the seven years that you were together. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. What did you just say? Gina didn't like it. He's like, you don't have to talk nasty like that. Like, you don't have to say nasty stuff. And about my ex and Jasmine's like what you're her lawyer now or what then she wants to know if they're still effing and she's like you make me look crazy I was like um you're kind of doing a good job at it on your own because what what are you fighting about you're fighting about the pink and or red and blue walls and the trinkets that are in his house that you haven't even gotten to the point where he's proposed and there's a K-1 visa and then there's a flight and like, oh, and by the way, you're keeping a big secret of your own. So what are you fighting about and freaking out over exactly? Like, it's very bizarre of you, don't you think? And you haven't even actually been in the house. You might like it. You might want to put a fresh paint, fresh red coat and be like, oh yeah, that's like a standout wall, an accent wall. I, it was very confusing, but she was so mad. She grabbed her stuff. She flew out of the gym. She put her mask on. She sat down and she started crying. And she's so mad and she is, hurt and she feels this is all so painful meanwhile gina is looking at her so scared thinks that she's emotionally unstable and he's concerned about it um he really concerned about it he's like i've never seen her freak out this bad and i don't know if she seems emotionally unstable and i'm it's giving me pause so she's still crying He's now in the bed, you guys. He's in the bed. And she comes in, she sits down, um, says that he lives in the past. And she is just can't believe it. And meanwhile, we actually have a real moment with her. And the real moment is that she's been hurt a lot in her past. And obviously, she's carrying that trauma with her. And deep down, she seems like a bulldog and like this woman that freaks out, but she's really scared deep down inside that she's going to get her heart broken again. And she's probably having real feelings for him. And now she's like worried. And so she's freaking out, right? And she's freaking out because she probably thinks that he's still in love with his ex-wife and that they're not on the same standing. Uh, so she decides that she wants to slow everything down. She doesn't want to talk about babies anymore. And she doesn't want to talk about moving to America. And she, again, storms off, takes a shower. I think that gives her time to like cool down just even a little bit because he's like, what can we do to get through this? And she's like, I don't want you to ever talk about your, your trips with other women. I don't ever want you to talk about your exes. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, but by the way, she says, if I lied a little bit, would that be okay? <laughs> and then she proceeds to tell him that this whole time that she said she wasn't on birth control and they had the plan to start having or trying for a baby. Um, by the way, I never went off of birth control. She's like, I never went off because this is the first time we've met. We're not ready. We need to slow all the things down. And phew, it feels good to be honest with you. Oh, wow. So this whole little freak out you had over red paint was more important and more serious and more hurtful than you lying to the man that you said that you were ready to have a baby with and that you were secretly still on birth control. That's not worth a freak out on his end. I'm confused. I'm confused. Um, next up, we meet Ben for the first time. Woo! Let me tell you a little something about Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. I cannot. I already did those two. Okay, good. So it's Benjamin. I know you guys don't like when I make noise with my papers, but I have to get my notes in order. So we just have to deal with it for a minute. Oh, I still have Mike and Jimena. Okay, so Ben. Ben, it's episode six. So it's literally halfway through the season, which is why I think that Ben uh, is a filler. And I have a few things I'm going to show you guys today. Um, so 52 from Fraser, Michigan. And let me tell you a little something. Why in the first five seconds, you guys, of his snippet, why is his shirt off? Why is his shirt off? He's talking about body fat percentages and his weight and all that. Why? I just, in the first five seconds? Oh, because I know what's going on here. I've seen this whole thing before. This is one big ad. So you are a fitness model. And so we're going to be promoting everything about fitness for you. Got it. So he describes himself as an optimistic hard worker. And he just loves his body. He loves working on his body. He loves showing off his body. He loves everything about his body. He's a fitness model um, and got into fitness modeling because a friend of his was like, hey, do you want to make it easy 400 bucks an hour? They're looking for older men that have abs. Okay. So he got into fitness modeling. However, we find out that he grew up in a super, super ultra fringe cult. And so he grew up uh, believing that your bodies were sinful and almost evil um, because of this fringe division of a mainstream Baptist denomination. But really, it was like a cult, he said. So he couldn't watch TV, couldn't go to movies. <clears throat> um, what else he couldn't do? He couldn't go to watch TV, couldn't go... He couldn't watch TV, couldn't go to the movies. He couldn't have friends outside of the church, couldn't step out of place. Um, and so it was very, very difficult. Uh, this is him with the glasses at the very end with the blonde hair and his ultra religious family that he grew up in the cult with. Um, and this is him as a young boy as well. So he decided that he wanted to go to heaven. And so he became a pastor. And I had so many questions, you guys. When he said he used to be a pastor, I, I was like, pastor of where? First of all, what church did you go to that made you feel like your body was evil? Like, can we talk about that? What? what? Anyhow, apparently he was a pastor and he ended up marrying 
another woman in the church, can't remember what she, he said she did, but someone else that worked in the church that he was a pastor at. They ended up having four kids, he said, which I thought was interesting because we only meet three of them. So like, what's the story behind that? Did one say, oh, hell no, I don't want to film? Is one, like, why do you say in the beginning of your episode that you have four kids and then you only introduce us to three? First of all, you're already halfway in the season. I already have questions. And now you're just bringing more questions because, you know, I take notes and I pay close attention. And so the little discrepancy is going to be um, thought of. And, you know, y'all are internet sleuths as well. So you can't come up in here incorrect. Don't be saying stuff that's not true because people will look for it. So, oh, as it says, Ben better not turn into Caesar from season three. Listen, Ben is Caesar and David 2.0. Like, and I'm going to tell you why I say that in a minute. So uh, four kids didn't work out after 24 years, y'all. He was married to his wife for 24 years, four kids deep. Oh, thanks, Dreamsicle. I always forget to hit, say that. Wherever you're watching, you can hit that thumbs up. If you can do it right now, that'd be great because I can see it in real time. When you hit that thumbs up, it takes one little boop, 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 thumbs up, boop, boop. Um, so he decided that um, it wasn't working out. And so his choice was either stay together or live a, a, a life in an eternal lake of fire. So apparently you chose the eternal lake of fire because you decided to leave her and divorce her. <clears throat> oh, you guys want me to show you what picture? Let's look back at the photo. What fourth kid is bl blurred out? One, two, three, four. This is this one because I see all their faces clearly. I'm not sure if that's what you guys are talking about, but but moving on. So he leaves her eternal lake of fire. Um, but he also was leaving the church slash cult in an effort to save his marriage, went to counseling that didn't work for them. And so now he's single and has been ready to mingle. He shows us not only his shirtless body, but his motorcycle that he bought online just very recently. He is the first to say that he's not going through a midlife crisis. But if you have to tell us you're going through, not going through a midlife crisis, perhaps you are. Um, so the time away from his wife, He's been lonely, so he went on some dating sites. He was inexperienced because, you know, he was married for 24 years, so he didn't know what the game was. And, you know, the game is rough out there, y'all. It's rough. Um, so he stopped dating for like a year and a half, but then he met a woman a few months ago, he says, which is mahogany that he, that he met. Um, let me show you guys this first. So this is mahogany. Uh, she's 24. She is from P Peru. And for those of you guys that are in my Patreon, and I told you guys she's from Russia, I went back in my notes. And the reason why I said that she was from Russia is because before the season came out, I was told she was from Russia. And that's why I was sitting in my head. So she's from Peru. She's 24 years old. They met um, online on social media. He slid into her D DMs and they started talking with texts. Um, and DMing with text and strictly only DMing with text. But he, in all those DMs that they've been doing in the last, oh, what, three months, figures that she has wisdom, maturity. And oh, by the way, this 24 year old girl from Peru who you've never ever met, you've only text, you've never even video chatted, she's your soulmate. Um, there's a 28 year age difference between them, but he still believes in the same things, uh, that he was raised with. So no sex, sex before marriage. Uh, the Lord is the center of his life. And so she says that she believes all those things as well. 
And what cinched it for him, and he realized that this is the woman that he is going to marry, is that in the three months of DMing, she said, you know, you deserve to be loved and I want to be that person. So he's decided that he's going to Peru to meet her in real life in a week. And so he goes to meet up with his friends, Jessica, Jason, and Charlie. Um, and they're having lunch, I suppose. And then he says, oh, you know, I'm cutting. I'm cut. She says, no. She goes, are you bulking or cutting, right? Again, a reference to his whole fitness modeling thing. He's like, oh, I'm cutting, you know, because I want to look good for a trip. And that's when he's like, I met this girl, yada, 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 Peru, 24. And friends are like, well, what, what? What's her emotional maturity level? And they think that he is desperate to find love. Um, and the fact that he's only talked on the phone with her two times. So they've DM for three months. They've talked on the phone twice and they've never video chatted. However, because catfishes do this, she sent a pre-recorded video of herself that said, hi, this is mahogany. Hi, this is mahogany. Hi, this is mahogany. And it was literally like three seconds. But from that, he has found his soulmate. And not only has he found his soulmate, he has given her money already. He's already sent her $1,000 because she needed a loan. You said a perfect stranger that you've never seen their face in real life? Like, at the very least, have this bitch hold up some type of newspaper screenshot, a screenshot of the date like she's a criminal and make sure that shit is real. How dare you have some random just... Stop it. Just stop it. This is all just, all just wrong. Anyways, friends think that he's desperate and lonely and that's why he's making poor choices. And I agree with his friends. Um, not only that, he has been scammed before and he's sounding like a perfect candidate for being scammed by these Yahoo boys. Uh, he was online and I guess he thought he was talking to some woman, but he ended up being talking to some guy from Africa and he learned of catfishing through that. Yet apparently he didn't learn a lesson because here we are with this new girl and you're sending money to someone that you've never met. It's very bizarre. Yeah, exactly. He sent a thousand dollars that we know of exactly. Mandy facts for a thousand dollar investment. He did get a TLC paycheck. He's like, yeah, go ahead and send that thousand that you're going to pay me to her and we'll be good. Uh... So <sighs> he's decided to also um, tell his kids, which I just totally don't understand. I don't understand why you're telling your kids anything about anything. I don't understand it. You haven't even met this girl. So what exactly are you telling telling them? It's not like you're going to introduce her because you don't know who you would even introduce. You just know from these photos and from one little video. Anyways, he's making dinner. He's invited the kids over. You know, he's trying to learn Spanish before his trip that's in a week. And uh, so the kids come over and he's going to tell them about mahogany. And he wants to tell them because the divorce has been hard on the kids and he wants to make sure everything's okay. Uh, as well as the kids coming over, Lisa's ex-wife is coming over because they have shared custody. Um, but it's a really bad co-parenting situation, he says, because she's super cold. She still has resentment towards him. Yeah, bitch. Y'all were married for 24 years and then you peaced out on her. And then all of a sudden you're Mr. Like abs fitness model. I'm a bounce out to Peru real quick from a 24 year old girlfriend that I've never met in real life. But, oh, I sent a thousand dollars to, which I probably could have given, you know, 250 a piece to my foreign gr four grown ass children. Anyways, I digress. 
So Acadia 19, Joy 14, 14, and Elijah 20. Three of the four kids show up. You can tell that they really love their dad. Now, here's the thing, you guys, that just gave me a whole lot of pause. I could go off on a tangent because you guys know that I can, but I'm not going to. All I'm going to say this. His oldest child is 20 years old, Elijah. The woman who says that the woman he says that is his soulmate is 24 years old. His oldest child is 20, Elijah. The second child is 19. And then the next child is 14. So 20, 19, and 14. And then your online girlfriend is 24. He tells them that he's fallen in love with a woman he met in Peru. Their first question was, does she even speak English? Uh, he's like, yes. They're planning a future together. He's going to go down there for three weeks and it's cricket silence. It's cricket silence. He then says that he feels like this whole thing is based on God's plan. Lisa, his ex-wife, calls him, calls him out and says that's bullshit because it tell me it wasn't God's plan when you were dating the 28-year-old that didn't work out. And he didn't mention that part when he was talking about how he took a year off, a year and a half off of dating. So his most recent ex-girlfriend is a 28-year-old young woman, and it didn't work out with them because uh, she had issues with him having to spend time with all his gaggle of four kids. That, okay, I promised that I wasn't going to go on a tangent. So they broke up. She broke up with him because, you know, the 52-year-old dating the 28-year-old when you're in different places, she probably wants you know, the one-on-one -on -one time she wants to be going out. She wants to be whining and dining. And you've got four grown ass kids, a 20 year old and your girlfriend's 28. And now your new online girlfriend is 24. I don't know. I, I just, I find it very hard to believe. I find it very hard to understand. And then if you want us to believe that it's not a midlife cri crisis, then prove it. Prove it because this is screaming midlife crisis. It's screaming everything wrong. What I don't want you to be like, though, Ben, since you're coming in hot and you're coming in late and I'm already invested in all the other characters and I kept calling you Brad because we're halfway through the season and you just pop up for no reason, what you better not be is a predator, okay? Just because you got a six-pack, you're still 52, so maybe take a seat and think about and reevaluate. Would you want your 19-year-old dating a 49-year-old? Okay. Think about that. Think about that. Now, that all being said, the wife was not impressed. Um, you know, she doesn't think it was God's plan at all. And she's like, you know, you've been here, done that. And... It's just not a good look. The kids think this whole thing is strange. They're only worried about the fact that anytime he jumps into a relationship, which is contrary to what he said, you guys, Mr. I was married for 24 years. Then I, I went online. I had some bad, bad Yahoo boy situation. He didn't mention that he had another 28 year old girlfriend and has been dating. And so the kids let it slip that every time he is within a relationship that he feels disconnected from them. Kids want to see a picture and I want to show you something. So you guys, I found her. Well, someone sent it to me actually. Um, Mahogany Roca. Her Instagram is passion 70 roll. And you might want to take a peek at it because she, she puts her all her 90 day stuff on, but here's the thing. I'm going to tell you this right now. You guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. I think I told you at the top of the season because I've been watching the show long enough to know that a, he's a filler. So he's just a filler and it's the same storyline that we've seen before. He's a filler for the season because they probably have cut and edited specific people like the Ellas and stuff where we're not seeing them on a consistent basis. So he's a filler. He's not, they're not going to, this is not going to happen. Spoiler alert. This is not going to happen. I'm going to tell you why. So she's on, Insta, if you go on Insta, there's not one single photo that has anything to do with the show, not one photo with him. And, and the thing that is always telling to me 
is when neither of the parties are following each other. So on her page, she's only following one, like one 90 day blog account and the casting producer for 90 day fiance. He is not following her either. So this whole thing, A, I don't buy it for one minute. I don't think that this is a thing. I think that he got cast and then they cast this girl as the other. I think he's going to pull a complete David. He's going to go over there. She's not going to exist or not want to meet him. He's going to have his feelings hurt. He's going to have been taken for a run for his money. That's it. That's all. Now, if they do meet you guys, they're going to meet for like a minute or he's going to look all over Peru for her because she's already there and that's it. That's all. But this is not a good look. The fact that they don't even follow each other, you know that this is just filler nonsense, a waste of time. So that's that, you guys. I want to might want to put myself back on and take this one off, perhaps. Um, that's the show. It was entertaining. I'll tell you that. It was entertaining. Oh, my God. Did I not talk about? Wait a minute. Did I not talk about them? Yeah. See, Mike and Jimena. It's not the show because I didn't talk about Mike and Jimena. So I'll do them real quick. Um, they're going for a walk. She's showing the dad's coffee growing area. Mike is still reeling for the fact that um, he wants kids and she's lied. And, you know, what's the future going to look like for them? He's really upset that she held this big secret because she's known all along that he's always wanted to have kids. So they have a little bit of alone time. Um, and he asks her, like, why did you lie to me? And why didn't you tell me? And she, again, explains that she suffered a lot of pain and contractions when she had her last baby. Um, and she was scared because she has been disappointed by men all the time. And so she thought that she was going to be single. So she decided that she was going to go get ahead and get her tubes cut and burnt, which I didn't realize was different than getting your tube tied. But she explained that it was. Um, she just felt that she was going to be single. She was going to be single and not ever meet anyone else. And so because she was living the lifestyle that she was living, she figured, like, I don't want to get pregnant again by having all of these baby daddies who I've never not ever been in a relationship with. So let me go ahead and handle my business because she's living a specific lifestyle. So <clears throat> he's just really disappointed. Um, and she was, she feels like she did the right thing. Cause on the one hand it was good because she was getting involved with the men she shouldn't have been getting involved with. Um, but on the other hand, she's sad because it would have been nice to have a baby with Mike. He then asked her, you know, if you knew I wanted to have kids one day, um, how did you think this was going to work? And she was like, you know, I have my two kids. I figured those could be like your kids. Um, and then she asked him, you know, do you regret coming to Columbia? And he says he doesn't know, but he absolutely regrets it. 100%. Um, So she's like, well, if you regret it, what about uh, one David and Harold? And that's where it took me out. I was like, first of all, you're introducing this dude that you've never met in real life up until now and to your kids because he has been your checkbook this whole time. And part of the reason I think you're holding on to him is because he's your financial stability. He's also different than the one night stands that you've been having over and over again and the baby daddies that you've been dating over and over again. So now all of a sudden you're going to guilt this guy that you've known for a few days and say that you came into their life like a dad. So what's going to happen to them? What? He says, because he's 
so nice and so innocent and doesn't know how the game works, that he loves them as his own. They're amazing. He doesn't want to hurt them. Um, so, you know, he says the nice things. She's like, forgive me for not being able to give you a baby. He forgives her automatically because he loves her. He thinks that they're, they're meant to be together. And he says, you know, we can raise them together. And I guess that that, that will be like the kids that we have together. But he's still having a hard time processing, which he should be. This is the first time getting laid. And you had all these plans and you've never had a girlfriend. And now you're finding your girlfriend is like lying to you left, right, and center. It's not a good look. And I think that it should give you pause and you should weigh out your options because you're still young. And so everything that you're taking on and you're taking on so quickly, you're like taking on not only an Insta family, which I don't think that that's a bad thing, but I think when you don't know that person and then also too, you're now financially going to be responsible for all of them and you're just getting your like I just I don't know I think it's a lot it's a lot a lot like save me save me like what have you done like what are you what would you have done had you not met him but I already know the answer to that which is sad to me. That's why I just think he should slow his roll and kind of get a bigger picture of what's going on because he's like still having a hard time processing that he might not have any kids. And he says, you know, no more secrets between us. Um, and so he's decided because things have been rough between them because of all the lying she's been doing that he's going to take her on a romantic getaway, just the two of them so they can get to know each other and really get everything that they haven't told each other out um, so they go to Salento, which is like a tourist spot. The room is beautiful. It's stunning. Mountainside view, all the things. He just really wants some alone time with her and wants to get to know her. And they start making out. And this fool, you guys, which was not romantic to me at all, but this fool like, does a little toot toot as they're making out. That is so not sexy. Not when you're like in romance mode. If y'all have been together for years and years and it's just funny, then that's just funny. But like when you're just getting to know someone, it, tell talk about take you out of the moment. Take you out of the moment. Uh, so she didn't like it. <clears throat> she didn't like that he did his little fart fart while they were kissing on the bed. So then they head over to the hot tub. He's like, ask anything you want. Um, just be honest. I want us to be open and honest and, and find out who we are and all the things. He wants to know what happened to the kid's dad. Why do you not know that? So she's already saying that you're the dad to her kids and you don't know what happened to the other two kids' dads. How is that not a conversation you had before you you came to, I just, what? But again, he's not experienced, right? So he probably doesn't know the questions that he should be asking. Um. So she says, well, she doesn't really know them because they were both basically one night stands, right? The first guy was a one night stand and she doesn't know. And the second guy is the prison dude. So she was never in a relationship with them. She never lived with them. And she just, they're literally just baby daddies and they have nothing to do with the two kids that she has. And this episode, you guys really just showed a lot about the type of life she was, she was living. Um, and then Mike wants to know a little bit more about like the guys that she's dated. And she admits that she used to live with a hitman. And she met him. He was a tattoo artist. She moved in with him and he was a hitman. And she, when she found out, she didn't feel safe. So she, she broke up with him. And then he ordered a hit on her, called her and said, you have three days to live or messaged her, whatever, left a voicemail, text, whatever, some type of message saying you have three days to live. So literally put a hit on her. She took it to the police and all of a sudden he disappeared and she hasn't seen him in two years. Okay. So you burnt your tubes. You don't know your son's dads. And then you used to live with a hitman. Now here's the thing that I've said 
And I said it over and over again. I'm going to say it again. Because a lot of people bring up to me that she doesn't look like she's 24. And I said either she's done hard drugs or she's done hard time. And we find out that her ex-hitman boyfriend not only ordered a hit on her, had her locked up. I knew it. I knew it. I watched too much true crime to not know what an inmate looks like. I don't know what it... Go and watch all the love after lockup. What watch all the true crime, any prison show? They they end up having this this look. It's like a hardened look, hardened look. So like, yeah, she's twenty four, but she's a rough twenty four. Can you imagine? She's only twenty four, but she was locked up, spent some time in jail. So Mike's worried now, right? He's like, how do you know that he's not going to come back and and my safety and our safety is going to be an issue? She's like, oh, I haven't heard from him in two years. Guess what? He probably couldn't find you because you were living off wherever you were living. And now you're on an international TV show talking about how you used to date a hitman, putting all his business out there. Guess what? Guess what? Anyways, um, that's just, that's the show for real, you guys. I will see you guys here tomorrow. Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to support the show. I'll see you guys here same time, same place tomorrow for um, we're doing Darcy and Stacey tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye for now.